Now we move on to the second part of the exercise in which we study the efficiency of Szilard's engine in terms of the conversion rate of information into work. In the first step of the cycle of this engine, we measure the occupancy of the dot and we can continue the cycle if we have measured that an electron has tunneled into the dot which means that we have to repeat the measurement until we obtain this measurement result. Then in step C, we have to repeat the measurement of the occup occupancy of the dot until we see that the dot is empty. So here the probability of detecting that an electron has tunneled into the dot is the probability of finding an electron at energy epsilon in the reservoir of electrochemical potential mu. And this prob probability is given by the Fermi distribution function in the reservoir. The Fermi distribution function is given by the well-known formula where we have 1 over the exponential function with argument energy minus electrochemical potential over Boltzmann constant times temperature plus 1. So we can write down the probabilities of having the right or a successful measurement in step A and C. So those probabilities probabilities of success in step A it is as said the probability of finding an electron at this energy in the reservoir which is simply F evaluated at the energy epsilon of the dot and to make um, the whole analysis we are doing simpler we can choose since we have this freedom of choosing where the dot level is we can choose to drive the dot level symmetrically about the electrochemical potential mu. So that here we are talking about the energy mu plus delta half. And then this energy here is mu minus delta half. And this makes things simpler because then the probability, or rather p, C of having a successful measurement in step C is the probability of finding an empty dot which is 1 minus the Fermi distribution function at mu minus delta half. And if you plug in the formula for the Fermi distribution function you will see that this uh, expression here is equal to f of mu plus delta half. So p c and p a are equal. We are dealing with the same probabilities in both steps. The value, the number which is interesting for us is the number of measurements we have to perform on average during one cycle of the engine. So we are talking about an expectation value and the so the we are interested in the probability of success on the nth measurement So we measure n minus 1 times and each time we fail and then we have the right result on measurement number n. So in, in, in the language of probability theory we can talk about a random variable x which is the number of measurements we have to do until we have a successful outcome and then the probability of x being equal to n given a probability of a successful measurement on one attempt, which is PA equal to PC 
equal to probability p. This one is the probability of failure n minus 1 times and success 1 time. So we have constructed this probability, this discrete probability distribution intuitively, and we can check that it is a correct probability distribution by checking that it is normalized. So we have to sum it over all possible values of our random variables, which is 1 to infinity. And this sum is easy to compute because we are because we are dealing with a geometric series. We can write p in front of the sum and we can shift n by 1 so that we start summing at n equals 0. And then the exponent of 1 minus p is n. And here we recognize a geometric series which evaluates to 1 over 1 minus 1 minus p, so that we have p over p, which is the series, and this is 1, as it should be. And as a reminder, the geometric series is the following, which for any z with absolute value smaller than 1 is equal to 1 over 1 minus Z. So now we can calculate the average number of measurements we have to do until we obtain the, de the desired outcome, which is the expectation value of what we call our random variable X. And this expectation value is now the sum over all possible values of x of the set value times the probability of obtaining this value in the realization. And again we have a sum a series which is easy to evaluate because this time we will see that it is the derivative of the geometric series. In fact we can write p in front of the sum we start summing at 1, and then we simply have n times 1 minus p. Uh, to, the, to the power n minus 1. And this here is the formula for the derivative of the geometric series. So to evaluate it, we can consider the derivative of, of this expression here, which is then 1 over 1 minus z square, so that here we have p, this p, and now we have p squared. And the final result is 1 over p. So if we have an event which is successful with probability p, the the average number of realizations that we need until we have a success is 1 over p. So if you throw a, a die and um, you want to obtain a 6, on average you have to throw 6 times because the probability of success is 1 over 6. And this result we can use it to compute the work that we extract on average for one measurement in our machine. This work per measurement is delta, which is the work extracted in uh, one cycle of the machine, over n, here I mean by n the average number of measurement, of measurements, and I write it explicitly that this n depends on delta, the delta which appears 
here in the argument of Fermi's distribution function. And here in that case, n is twice this expectation value here because we have step A with this number of measurements on average and then step C with the same number of measurements. So that here we will have this one half times delta and P is uh, the Fermi distribution function, 1 over n we have, so 1 over 1 over p. So here we simply have f of mu plus delta half. Now we ask the question what is the optimal value of delta in terms of efficiency here. So what is the value of delta for which this expression is maximal. So unfortunately this uh, maximum cannot be found analytically because we are dealing with an equation where we have delta times the exponential of delta appearing and, and this is an, equ an equation which has no uh, closed form solution. But we can plot this function here and find the minimum, the maximum um, with numerical methods. So if we plot the average, the, the e energy extracted on average per measurement, we obtain a curve which has a maximum at a value of delta of the order of 2.5 times kBT and uh, the maximum work extracted per measurement is of the order of 0 0.28 times kBT. So in intuitively we see that if delta is small, we are not doing anything basically. The amount of energy that we, the amount of heat that we extract from the contact is is zero in the case delta equals zero. And for very large deltas, in one successful cycle we extract a lot of energy, but we have to measure many times before we obtain the right outcome of the measurement, because a large delta means that the dot level is far above the electrochemical potential of the reservoir and the probability of finding an electron in the dot is extremely small.